All right, welcome, it's indisputable. I'm your host Rashad Richard, it is good to be with you all again. I missed you yesterday, but you were in the very capable hands of the big homie, JR. He did a remarkable job, honored to have him drive the Ferrari, okay? And David Schuster, listen, these guys are pros all day, killing it. But I'm back, now I can't tell you exactly what I was doing today, but something big is going to happen in about two weeks and I can do the big reveal. But I will say this, because I love you all so much that I did not stay away for two days like I was supposed to. I hopped my behind on the plane at three o'clock in the morning to come back to the studio at 7 a.m. So I can do pre-production with my team and be with you right here live. So if I'm a little loopy today, it is because I have been up for 24 hours straight, okay? All right, ladies and gentlemen, my first story for today in a minute. (laughs) In a minute, uh, breaking down news of the day. We got Dr. Jonathan Metzl, he's been with us before, brilliant guy, professor, remarkable individual, gun violence expert and professor at Vanderbilt, an author of Dying of Whiteness will be with us in just a moment. And we have Brad Palumbo, fee.org correspondent, National Review contributor. He wants to end all federal unemployment, socialism versus capitalism will be part of the debate. And also the, as they call it, Joe Biden mandate for COVID vaccines. It's not a mandate, but that's part of the argument. All right, ladies and gentlemen, first story. Tucker Carlson has admitted he lies on TV, okay? Let's just go to his words first. The real problem with the withdrawal from Afghanistan was not terrible decisions that the Biden administration made or the Pentagon made, or that our entire foreign policy establishment bipartisan made for 20 years. No, the real problem, is some guy in Alabama uh-huh. who's got unauthorized views. It's like, maybe you should stop attacking these people because they are the weakest people in our society and you're doing it in order to defend like the people in our society, but also the richest and the most powerful. You're the Praetorian guard for the most powerful people. Like, how can you live with yourself? I mean that, that is so immoral. You so what do you th- what do you think the answer to that question is? How do they when when you have to cover some idiotic thing that Stelter said or Cuomo, just these these clown people? When you have to cover it, right? Or Don Lemon, as you call him, like what? How do you think they live with themselves at this point when they just lie again and again? And we have the internet to expose the lies. If this isn't twenty years ago when you were on CNN, yeah. and, we, and we couldn't expose things, we can expose it now, and they still do it. Well, it's I guess I would ask myself like. I mean, I lie if I'm really cornered or something, I lie. I really try not to. I try never to lie on TV. I try, I just don't, you know, I don't like lying. I certainly do it, you know, out of weakness or whatever. But to systematically lie like that mm-hmm. without asking yourself, like, why am I doing this? <laughs> These guys are bashing liars. And in the middle of bashing liars, He distinguishes himself from other liars by admitting, yes, he too is a prolific liar and he lies on television. But listen, don't blame Tucker. He lies only when he's cornered. He lies only out of weakness, you weak individual. I'm not the one calling you weak, damn it. You called yourself weak. Tucker Carlson admits that he has lied. On television, I've actually uncovered at least one of those lies. We all know that he has misrepresented the truth as part of his brand. It gets even deeper. Now, here's one of those instances where I know for sure that Tucker Carlson was lying on TV. Now, here it is. Uh, I can say that actually you and I went to dinner uh, about two years ago. Your wife was there and I brought a friend of mine, you'll remember her. And she was actually threatened by the FBI, told that if she wouldn't cop to the fact that somehow I was involved in some pay for play scheme, uh, that she could face trouble. And so. Tucker, is this true? 
I, I, I don't remember the, the woman you're speaking of or the context at all, honestly. But I, I would like to know who. <laughs> he was cornered. He's a weak man. He doesn't like lying on TV. He just, you know, but he's not systematically lying. And, and that's the real issue here, okay? Uh, breakdown, Fox News host admitted his relationship with the truth sometimes wavers. As he was interviewed by fellow conservative media host, Dave Rubin. Here's what's really ironic, y'all, okay? The first time Tucker Carlson tells the truth, it's the first time he actually admits the line. This I don't I don't know anybody else who shares this first ever, other than Tucker. Um, it happened after Ruben asked uh, Carlson how CNN employees like Chris Cuomo uh, and Brian uh, Stelter live with themselves when they just lie again and again, and we have the internet to expose the lies. So there's your context, right? Carlson seemed to take the question personally. <laughs> to the point where he made this confession about his own relaxed relationship with factual accuracy. And then he goes on to what you just heard. Now, this is not the first admission of him lying. As a matter of fact, it's certified in court documents. Carlson's admission of lying isn't exactly news. Why? In fact, Fox News won a defamation lawsuit that was filed against Carlson last year by successfully arguing that given Mr. Carlson's reputation, any reasonable viewer arrives with an appropriate amount of skepticism about the statement he makes. In other words, they sue Tucker for defamation. Fox News defends him in court and the defense is, you know, brubby line. That's the defense. Doc, you work in the psychological arts, my friend. What made Tucker Carlson tell the truth for the first time and snitch on himself about being a liar? Well, there was something very confessional about this whole moment, right? And in, in other words, like, and it was from a psychological perspective. Quite revealing, right? Because he's accusing other people of lying. Right. Um, and then he's like, oh, I lie too. But then he was, as you say, distinguishing his own lies from the lies of other people. Now, I, I think I think it's fair to say, on one hand, you know, oh, we all know people are casting the news. It's not just about factual information. But I think the issue here is um, first of all, of course, people do rely on people like Tucker Carlson for a lot of factual information, information about the pandemic, about the vaccine, about all these factors. And so there is a kind of basis of kind of truthful information that I think people should adhere to. Um, so I think that's part of it. Um, the other part is after getting the invite for your show, I went down the rabbit hole. I I watched the whole <laughs> I watched the whole interview. <laughs> um, mm -hmm. And and what was interesting about Carlson's kind of formulation is his lies were in the service of a greater ideal, which in, in his interview was about protecting um, poor white people who are getting get kind of beaten by the system. They're the most kind of helpless kind of people. Um, and so there was this idea that basically his lies were in the service of a bigger ideal, which was a very, a very just I mean, watch the interview, a very racial ideal. Um, mm -hmm. And so he does this as a way of kind of putting his position toward a kind of racial politics of defending poor white people who, as he says, are getting kind of the worst shaft of the system. And so he's also play, almost kind of playing the race card in terms of defending his lying in a particular way, which I, I thought was fascinating. I mean, it really was as a psychiatrist, a pretty fascinating 45 minute session into the mind of Tucker Carlson. Yeah, maybe one day your class will use this as a case study um, for insanity. All right, uh, a Philadelphia woman, will now be paid $2 million because she was beaten by officers and separated from her child. Let's put up a picture first of what they did to this young lady, Rakia Young. Let's put up a picture of Miss Young. I want you to see this, okay? She was innocent. She did nothing wrong, committed no crime. Let me give you some background. This happened in the city of Philadelphia. 
They will now have to pay Ms. Young two million bucks because she was pulled from her car, beaten by officers. Why did this happen? Because she's driving unknowingly into a large demonstration. She's not part of the demonstration. She's not a protester. She's a mother trying to get her family home. And so she decides to turn around. Well, the cops weren't having that. Oh No, 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 obviously this is a threat, right? Uh, she's a nursing aide, Ms. Young was headed home in the early morning hour, hours of October 27, 2020. When she unknowingly drove into a large protest over the killing, the police killing of Walter Wallace Jr. She tried to make a three point turn to get away from the tent scene when officers smashed out her windows with their batons. Both she and her nephew were beaten, but neither were charged. Her hearing impaired toddler lost his hearing aids during the incident. Now, I want to remind you, this is a protest about police misconduct. She's not even part of the protest. She's trying to avoid the protest because she's trying to get a family home. She has a baby that's hearing impaired. She has her nephew in the vehicle. She's a woman, she's a mother. She's just trying to get home. I want to show you a still picture of the police surrounding her car. Now that's scary. Anyone would be terrified in that situation. Here's another photo of her toddler being taken away from her SUV. Remember, she committed no crime here, okay? And I'm gonna show you again what they did after breaking her window and forcing her out the car, what they did to Miss Young. Here's a picture of Miss Young again. Victim of police brutality just because she was near a protest against Police brutality, that's culture, that's the culture of policing. There's no sensitivity here, there's no care for human life. They're not concerned about the children being inside of this car or a toddler who has a hearing impairment. No, did not matter. While the toddler was separated from his mother, a photo was taken of him with the police. The photo would be posted by a police Facebook group. So let me tell you what they did. They separate the mother. This is how diabolical these guys are. They separate the mother from the child. The child is now just wandering around, no shoes, can't hear, hearing aids are lost somewhere. And they are beating up this child's mother. And so a cop is carrying around the child. Show the picture. The National Fraternal Order of Police posted this picture of what they created. The cops created this right here. And they say the child was lost during the violent riots in Philadelphia, wandering around barefoot in an area that was experiencing complete lawlessness. The only thing this Philadelphia police officer cared about in that moment was protecting this child. We are not your enemy. We are the thin blue line and we are. The only thing standing between order and anarchy, hell to the null. You are the anarchy. The reason why that child is barefoot and wandering around is because of those lawless ass cops who broke that window, beat up that mother, beat up that nephew, allowed that toddler to roam around with no shoes on and could not hear anybody talking to him. And then you use it for propaganda, no apology. Propaganda for you. Now the city has to pay this family $2 million. Um, Doc, I'm sorry, man. Stuff like this infuriates me. Because it's infuriating. I mean, it highlights all of these bigger issues. I mean, certainly the issue in itself, I mean, you've just shown pictures of a, of a, of a crime. A crime against three innocent victims, and so in that sense, um, there's the crime itself, which is infuriating. And I think 
I think fury is is a justifiable response. Absolutely, you know, these are people who are helpless. A nurse's aide and her family just trying to get home. So there's part of it, but there's two other layers here, right? That that make it even even more upsetting. One is, of course, she was guilty not just because she's a motorist, she's a black motorist mm-hmm. um, that, that that's driving by, and so there was this kind of guilt of association. She's linked to the protesters, um, and then she's in a car, right? And so. Think about what happened after all of this hap- is happening. Is that you know states across the country legalized people driving into protesters, right? And so the the kind of symbol of a car in relation to a protest is something that also is very charged, yeah. because there were all these laws that happened across the country that basically said it's okay to drive into protesters in, at times like this. And so, in a way, her you know <laughs> just the, the layers of kind of racial politics surrounding this and what it means and also what it means in the context this happened october 2020 and since that time it's kind of like protesting while black and driving while black these are both things that are being pathologized by the system um while at the same time enabling the rights of white motorists to basically run over protesters um you know in different situations and so there are levels of fury and frustration here that are much bigger than just the actual event itself which again is is pretty horrific well said let me drop some of these names um sergeant david chisholm a 13 year veteran who worked in the 26th police district was fired for violating departmental policies, including inappropriate communications or conduct while on duty, use of force, and lying or attempting to deceive during a departmental investigation. Police officer Darren Cardos, a seven year veteran who worked in the 19th police district was fired for excessive use of force and physical abuse with the baton. 15 other officers are currently awaiting disciplinary proceedings, 15 other cops. One woman, a baby, and a nephew. I gotta highlight this story. Um, Dr. Fauci had to literally go on CNN to debunk Nicki Minaj. Um, Let's play the video. And pop star Nicki Minaj tweeted yesterday that she's not vaccinated, she's doing her own research. And then she shared an anecdote I found rather unbelievable, to be honest, about alleged side effects that her cousin's friend supposedly experienced in Trinidad. I wouldn't normally even ask you about this. I want you to address what she said, because for anyone out there who has any questions about this, Dr. Fauci, is there any evidence that the Pfizer, the Moderna, or the J&J vaccines cause any reproductive issues in men or women? The answer to that, uh, Jake, is a resounding no. There's no evidence that it happens, nor is there any mechanistic reason to imagine that it would happen. So the answer to your question is no. There is a lot of misinformation, uh, mostly on social media. And the only way we know to counter mis and disinformation is to provide a lot of correct information and to to essentially uh, debunk these kinds of claims which you know may be you know innocent on her part i'm not you know blaming her for anything but she should be thinking twice about propagating information that really has no basis as except a, a one off anecdote and that's not what science is all about now let me say this very clearly okay what nikki minaj said is untrue Okay, she's making claims based on what somebody told her. This is what we call uh, what they say. People do do this all the time. They say, well, they say, and they make up something or repeat something. Well, who in the hell, who, who is they, okay, right? If they are not connected to a medical background, to a scientific research background, or infectious disease background, I don't give a damn who they are, all right? I know how to follow science, which is called the field of study. Now, I'm not doing this segment to bash Nicki Minaj. She's an artist and she is well within her rights to say what she feels is true for her. And it was in a conversation format. But I will say this to all artists, and I know a lot of them personally. You have a significant platform. What you say is not in the silo, your words do not exist in a bubble. They influence masses. 
with that level of platform comes a significant level of responsibility. Doc, we got about one minute, what are your thoughts? I think we live really in a crazy time right now. And if two years ago, you would have told me that I'd be on TV talking about a segment where Dr. Fauci, Nicki Minaj and the word testicles appeared together. <laughs> I would say, man, what planet did I live on? I mean, land on, that's kind of where we're at right now. Um, I thought Fauci actually handled this incredibly well. Um, yeah. He did not go after the messenger. He was very empathic. He said, you know, she might believe this. Let's have a conversation about it. He so he was not an attack. He basically talked about social responsibility, about platform, and I also think he used it as an opportunity to address some of the misinformation. I mean, there is all this fake information out there about reproduction and vaccines. Yeah. And so he used he used an opportunity to basically say there is actually no mechanism that connects these in a way that I I hope was not. You know, I mean, I don't know what Nicki Minaj's response was, but it did not seem to me to be condescending. It seemed to be, let's have a conversation and dispel some of some of these myths. Agreed. We got more on the other side. It's indisputable. Stick and stay. Good to be with you. We got a lot of viewer comments. Let's get to it. Before I go to the comments, let me remind you: you have waited. It is here. Indisputable merchandise. Now, what do we have? Holly anticipated. I wish a Karen Wood t shirts. We got male, female versions of these t shirts. Very stylish. I'm being told it is the it thing right now. I need you to go to work tomorrow. With an I wish a Karen Wood t shirt, pop a blazer over it. All right? Now, here's the thing if you see a Karen and you record a Karen with your I wish a Karen Wood t shirt and you send it to me so I can talk about it on the I wish a Karen Wood segment, instant viral video. Remarkable. Make sure you go right now to shoptyt.com. Big ups to everybody. And TYT who made that possible. Um, we went through a lot of back and forth to make sure we came up with a design that I think you all will absolutely love. Okay, so I got I wish you Karen Wood, and we also got They Won't Stop, I Won't Stop. Um, they Won't Stop, I Won't Stop Tees are on there as well at shoptyt.com. Go ahead and make sure those fly off the shelves, all right? Um, we're now in podcast. So wherever you get your podcast, uh, Acast, Apple, Podcast, etc., make sure you download the podcast, download the app, like the podcast, follow the podcast, and give us five stars. Take us anywhere, all right? And you will never miss another episode. Even if you have a long road trip, you're gonna enjoy the bullpen. I wish you Karen Wood and everything else, all right? Um, and big announcement, my dear sister, Senator Nina Turner. Is now here. TYT Network. I'm so happy to have her greatness with us. Former Ohio State Senator Nina Turner is joining TYT, and she'll be joining me right here on Indisputable every Thursday as a guest co host. Make sure to tune in. It's Nina Thursdays. The conversation, don't forget, watch the conversation live today, 5 30 p.m. Eastern Time, 2 30. PM Pacific time at tyt.com forward slash live. That's right before the Young Turks. Um, <laughs> Jack gets into a heated debate with conservatives over vaccine mandates. It's priceless, y'all. You got to see it. All right. Um, make sure to subscribe and watch all interviews at youtube.com forward slash tyt conversation. Let's get to the comments. Uh, Eric the Red. Your energy and dedication to, to duty is admirable, doctor. Thank you, and we love you too. Thank you, I love y'all. Thank you so much for that. Um, Mickey C, the silver haired dragon. Uh, welcome back, Dr. Richard, we missed you. But you really should be more careful about who you choose to sit in for you. The combo of JR and David was rocking, and we were rocking with them. Given that your twisted sense of humor is like ours, we're so looking forward to you being loopy. <laughs> Thank you for both, all right. Uh, is this Eileen Funky Cold Medina? 
Uh, all Dr. Richie, we love you for coming back a day early. Uh, we're all going to have to buy your t-shirt for that. You don't stop, I won't stop. That's the spirit. Thank you for that. Um, happily Vax says, uh, the health minister of Trinidad responded to the swollen you know what. Uh, what a time to be alive, <laughs> it really is. <laughs> Just imagine if you're a politician having to address your nation about that, okay. Um, key to boot forever, hey doc, I keep coming across stories I think you find interesting. How should I share them with you? I've tagged you on TikTok on a few. You're great as usual and I hope you get some rest tonight. Thank you for that. Uh, do me a favor, so I'm not actually active on TikTok. I'm all over TikTok. I had no idea I was all over TikTok until uh, my longtime executive assistant brought it to my attention because she is on TikTok, right? I have an account, but I'm not really active. So if you wanna get a story to me, I want you to email me at richie316 at gmail.com, R-I-C-H-E-Y 316 at gmail, all right? Ladies and gentlemen, I wish a Karen would. You wanna call the police on them for having a barbecue on a and Sunday? You're gonna feel free, back off! I'm gonna tell them there's an African American man threatening my life. Donald Trump, Karen, uh, this is sad. So while you're calling Black Lives Matter terrorist, you're wearing the name of a terrorist on your shirt. Donald Trump radicalized domestic terrorists to attack the US Capitol, number one. Number two, um, you claim to be a Christian woman. And this always takes the cake for me because I guess her Christianity gives her even added privilege to tell you what lives matter and what lives do not. Because she clearly said, no, 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 no. You know, black people matter, but not those black people. And not criminal black people. <laughs> no, no, those lives do not matter. Um, Madam, I want to remind you that in your Christianity, Jesus or Yeshua is a man of color. Number two, he was noted as a criminal. He had a warrant for his arrest and was captured by the authorities. So based on your definition of what lives matter and those that do not. Jesus, who you proclaim to be your Messiah, would not have mattered to you if he were here today. Okay, also, according to the journalist Kyle Land, people were riding by screaming homophobic slurs to the protesters. This individual was berated, obviously, you see what happened there. Doc? Why do people do this? Why does she commit an act of criminality herself by physically accosting this peaceful protester? You know, it's a high bar to to reach the above the bar, Karen um, mm. level, and she she hit every every note. I mean, part of what <laughs> yeah. it was was, um, you know, it was it, it wasn't just the tone, the kind of all knowing tone, but it was it was so condescending. I mean, I'm it's just so hard when people say, oh, I'm. First of all, I'm doing this for your own good. I'm doing this to protect you. There are things that I know that you don't know. So here's somebody out there supporting Black Lives Matter 
And she has the audacity to come up and say, I know things about them that you don't know and only if you knew what I knew. So it's on, on one hand incredibly condescending in a particular way in, in, in that regard. Um, and then just this whole idea of kind of terrorism being thrown around, you know, this idea that basically, oh, there are nice black people and then there are these terrorists. Um, and drawing that line, it's just, um, I, I, I mean, I, you hardly even know what to say anymore, except that the logic itself um, is so all encompassing that, um, you know, I, I, I think you hit the nail exactly on the head <laughs> with that. Yeah, it's quite interesting, fascinating. We will continue to highlight Karens because Karens are in fact dangerous. I want to highlight this story because it gives us a very pure opportunity to have insight into the psychology of others, okay? This person was not putting on for a camera. This individual was, was, was not pontificating on a news program. This person was at a bar saying what he felt was true, okay? Here's the video. Well, it's a very sore subject relax. for me. Okay, you want me to stick a needle in your arm? You can do that too. Honey, you relax. Very sore subject for me. Thanks, man. Okay. The way I've seen the world go down is disgusting. If no one's talking about it, don't come to me. Stop mm -hmm. talking about it. He did not talk about it. Because no one's talking about it, and it's disgusting. Oh. And no one wants to talk about it. Everyone. I know, everyone shut up. Everyone shut up. No, you shut up. No, I am shutting up, but everyone else no, shut up not. too. Everyone else no shut up too. Is I know no one else is talking. Exactly. Honey. Stop. Right now. No. You're causing me to you cause me to talk more. Because no one else is talking exactly. It's Enough. and everyone knows it. Enough. It's maiming and killing people. You want stuff like I'd rather do heroin than I, I'd rather put a vaccine in my arm. I'd rather take a shot of heroin. Honestly, God. I'd rather take a shot of heroin. No, it's not. I'd rather take a shot of heroin. At least I know it's heroin. Oh, sorry. No, you're good. I didn't say no. Okay, dude, please stop. No, you No, I'm not stopping. This has to break it up. You brought that off, and I hate the fact that you brought that off. Can I apologize for you to bring it up? Yes. Okay, thank you. I, he did not tell you. I know, but I know when you brought the fact that I don't know what you're telling me. No. No, I will not be wearing a mask anywhere. I know. It's good. No, will I be getting tested? Okay, we're good. Right, okay, thank you. Thank you. It just gets my blood boiling. Stop. Okay, I know first appearances, this guy's anti vax and anti mask, right? But it's deeper than that, okay? He said that he'd rather do heroin. He, he said this like four or five times, okay? He made it real clear that he, he'd rather do heroin than take the COVID vaccine. And then I find it quite interesting as to why. He says the reason is because he knows what's in heroin, right? Now listen, I don't know what's in heroin. I can research it, I can Google it, and I can tell you what it says. I don't know what's in it. You know why I don't know what's in heroin? Just off the top of my head, because I don't use it, <laughs> that's why. But if you do use it, you probably know what's in it. Or if you have used it before, you are likely aware of all of the ingredients and everything involved. I'm just speculating here, okay? now. Here's what I want to do, because I think there's a deeper story here that we must analyze, and that's why I have a psychiatrist on the show today. I think it's important that we listen to the heart of people rather than their words, okay? Now, his words are saying, I don't want COVID-19 vaccinations. His heart is saying, I would like heroin. <laughs> Doc, am I wrong here? Am I looking? Is that too much of a leap here? The guy said it like five damn times. He wants some heroin. Well, and also he's drinking rose in a bar, right? <laughs> so it's like stuff like this gives rose a bad name. You know, it's just an innocent bystander here. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, there's, I mean, this was like one of these like kind of, you know, 
naked moments, right? This guy did not know he was going to be on on television, and 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 now he is, right? And so, it was a it was a pretty interesting moment. I mean, certainly, I think one thing that's important about this about this is this idea that heroin's been around for centuries, but this vaccine is, you know, the anti-vax movement likes to call it an experimental vaccine. Now, I can't tell you how untrue that is. Actually, the technology that's in the Moderna and Pfizer vaccines, the vaccines we use in this country, have been tested for 20 years in different against different viruses. They were part of an unsuccessful HIV virus, a bunch of other viruses. So these these vaccines have been tested, and one of the things we need to be pushed back on is like this is just some new technology that was invented yesterday. That that's absolutely not the case. I would dare say there have been many more clinical trials of the um, of the uh, RNA technology in these vaccines than there have <laughs> for heroin, right? And so <laughs> these vaccines have actually been probably more tested uh, than heroin. But but I do also think that you're right that it's important to look. On a deeper level, what are the fears that people bring to this? I mean, why are people so afraid of the vaccine? What is it about a mask that that is so upsetting? And I think part of it, as you can hear here, is it's not just about the science that was a little ridiculous. Um, it's also about being told what to do, having your quote unquote freedom and liberty taken away from you. Um, but this guy, I don't know, the way she talked him into getting the vaccine was to Go on a trip to Cabo, apparently. So if that's what it takes, you know, let's <laughs> let's all go to Cabo and get vaccinated or something. But but again, I I I think you're right that it was a moment that kind of we got to see into the the kind of the logic or the 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 false logic that people apply when they're being told what to do and in this case get a vaccine. Yeah, that's a great analysis, Doc. <clears throat> or he just wanted some heroin. Yeah, we got more on the other side. It's indisputable. Stick and stay. Welcome back, it's indisputable. We got a lot of comments, let's get to it. Uh, thank you all for always engaging. Just Be Anti-Racist says, Dr. Richie, my 19 year old son Kendrick really admires you and his favorite segment of your show is, I wish a Karen would. He saw your Karen shirt and immediately asked me to get it for him for Christmas. Listen, you're obviously mom of the year, okay? <laughs> thank you for that. Progressive Lady Chef. Uh, Dr. Richard, have you seen the Lincoln Project's uh, Ivermectin commercial ad on YouTube yet? If not, it's priceless, I promise. I've seen it, and it is. They, When I tell you they have an amazing marketing team, all of their commercials are spot on, all right? Uh, Kelly O'Hara, my poet, all right, let's get it. <clears throat> the Trumpers were big mad, signed their petitions, <clears throat> and went after Gavin uh, with great admonitions. The man that they chose for repeal and replace, tripped over his feet and fell flat on his face. Let's break out the juice, ice vodka and blender and cheer all together. Down goes Larry Elder, <laughs> I love it. Uh, this was, she says, this was my last one about him doc, I promise. I wrote it on Friday hoping it came true. Or Kelly, it came true because you wrote it on Friday. All right, thank you for that, bars. Uh, YouTube super chat, Bernie the Kiwi Dragon. Maybe it's because I just got off my train, but Trump supporters all like stand behind the yellow line on the platform and tell other people to. Problem is, they're always facing the wrong way. <laughs> One of the saddest stories you'll ever hear, 12 year old kid killed because a cop broke protocol and did a pit maneuver against an entire family, basically. Let's show the picture of this 12 year old young man who was killed. Leiden Boykins, this happened in Georgia. 12 year old boy was killed in a vehicle crash that occurred when a Georgia state trooper used a pit maneuver to end a high speed chase. It gets deeper, the young man was a passenger in the car being driven by his neighbor, a 35 year old Charlie Moore. They were close, the family was close. While Georgia State Troopers chased the vehicle on September 10th. That gives you some background. Now, I also partially blame the driver, don't miss that, okay? I do. I also blame those who took an oath to protect and serve. I also blame the cop who engaged against this car, contrary 
to department standard and protocol. And now a 12 year old kid is dead. I'm gonna give you background. Um, Mr. Moore, along with this young, uh, along with his young son, were given Boykins a ride home when they were pulled over at 1 a.m. for speeding. However, Mr. Moore refused to lower his driver window or produce any type of identification. That's according to the police statement, okay? <clears throat> the unnamed trooper called for assistance and a deputy responded and broke Moore's window. Moore, a black male, allegedly told authorities he was a sovereign citizen and drove away and led police on the chase. Moore was reportedly afraid of what the encounter with the police might turn into and tried to call 911 during the chase so sheriffs could intervene. It gets deeper, the pursuit continued, okay? At a high rate of speed and the driver was driving recklessly, that's according to the report, the trooper terminated the chase by using the pursuit immobilization technique or pit maneuver. The Kia exited the roadway and overturned in a ditch. The rear seat passenger was unrestrained and suffered fatal injuries. Okay. Moore and his 14 year old son were treated for minor injuries. During the chase, Moore was on the phone with 911 saying, I am afraid, I'm afraid for my life, he told the dispatcher. They need to get them off me right now, the driver said, because I'm scared, I got my kids with me right now. After the car was forced off the road, you can hear more screaming at the young man who was dead. He, he died of those injuries. Um, the Georgia State Patrol, they brought murder charges against the driver. Um, I have no beef with that, by the way, not at least not right now. The beef I have is why have, have you not brought murder charges against the cop? According to Georgia State Patrol's chase policy, let's put that chase policy up. Troopers are supposed to consider several variables when doing the pit maneuver, including if children are in the car and must consider several methods of stopping a vehicle before performing a pit maneuver. No evidence of that happened. The family said that no one from law enforcement notified them that there had been a crash and they are not sure who identified this 12 year old's body. Okay, you have an adult named Charlie Moore making a unwise, making an unwise decision, bad decision. He may have been in fear for his life. I still don't think it was the right move, but we absolutely know that what the cop did was against policy. That's the absolute wrong move. You do not do a pit maneuver of a vehicle that you are aware that children are inside of. That is reckless disregard for life. That is a criminal issue. No, that's not what Georgia says. Doc, how do you see this? You know, it's such a tragedy on so many levels. I'm actually writing a book right now about a case very similar to this. And so I have a lot of thoughts, more than we can go into today. Um, and and but first of all, let me just say there's much more to this story than, than what we know. But I yeah. will say just based on what we know, there are all these layers, right? On, on one hand, the driver um, doesn't roll down his window. And then interestingly claims sovereign citizenship, which we can talk a lot more about that. But that means something very particular. It's something that has white supremacist uh, history, but also history of kind of you know, a kind of a fascist politics history. So why did he claim sovereign citizenship? Why didn't he roll down his window? That those factors, um, that's part number one. Then part number two is, um, you know, I can just tell you that you're ex exactly right. Cops stop doing high speed chases and it's against policy, certainly here in Tennessee where I am and pretty much across the country for this exact reason, right? The yield of high speed chase was hardly, it wasn't like in the movies where, you know, you get smoking in the bandit or something like that. 
There were accidents in high speed chases, innocent motorists, children, pedestrians. So police stopped doing maneuvers like this pretty much across the board. And the other thing is you can track the cars from helicopters and there's other ways to do it. And so, and right. ultimately the last part of course is the ultimate innocent victim, just a kid who was just picking up a ride home, you know, didn't didn't have any part of this. Um, and ultimately, you know, that that's the ultimate tragedy is, um, you know, just that, that a, a a young person's life has been ended because of these these reckless actions. Something I say all the time, Doc. You can have a policy in writing, but if you have culture that's adversarial to that policy, culture will eat policy alive any day. So they have the right policy in writing. They say you can't do this, according to the state troopers in Georgia. They got it in writing. But the culture is antithetical to what's on paper. Um, next story, a group of anti-maskers, this was really insane. They took over a school board meeting and declared themselves newly elected. This was in the San Diego area, let's just go to the video. I have not been a member of any party or organization or otherwise that advocates the overthrow the government of the United States or the state of California. You guys can go home. Whether unlawful You're finished. I will not advocate or become a member of any party or organization or otherwise that advocates the overthrow of the government of the United States or the state of California by force or violence or other unlawful Sorry, we're, it's not time for you to speak. Yeah. Okay, well, all I need you guys, you guys see No, they need to vacate because they actually have lost their jobs. Okay. So they, this they is the new board. Office. They walked out. They need to leave. So. And they didn't adjourn. So. So we're good. Okay, listen, the real school board members had left. Okay, these people disrupted, they ended the meeting, they left. These individuals said, "Oh no, they vacated, and we must now declare ourselves the new school board." Now, listen, I have never seen this level of privilege in group activity before. You, you literally can bypass a democratic process, voters, and every other rule of law imaginable, and just make yourself a school board member by pure privilege and determination. Here's what the, uh, I, I guess, president. The new president of the school board, uh, here's what this guy said. So we entered the building peacefully. We refused to leave and we, we demanded accountability from the Powell Unified School District Board. And the board vacated their seats tonight, which we then brought in a constitutionalist who uh, uh, we held a quorum and we voted in a new board. Uh, you are looking at uh, the new uh, president of the Powell Unified School District, apparently. We're not really sure what move is next, but we'll be reaching out to news organizations and doing a press release to let people know what happened and to dispel the rumors and misinformation that was spewed by the Powell Unified School District Board, which by the way, these people acted like uh, absolute I'm gonna say it, jerks. They wouldn't look us in the face. Um, they acted above us. And this is going on all over the country. We have people that are representing us, that are supposed to represent us, and they're not representing us. And this is taxation without representation. This is how the American Revolution started the first time. <laughs> um, <laughs> sir, taxation without representation, you just got elected without voters. So, so come on, man. All right, Doc, we got like one minute. Uh, what's your thoughts and, and tell people how they can follow you? You know, what, what's going on with school board meetings now? You know, it's, it used to be just do the business, you know, order the textbooks and stuff like that. So, you know, I'll just tell you, I'm here at Vanderbilt. We have a mask policy. Uh, it actually is fantastic for, for education. People are much more able to engage. It's actually much more effective um, in terms of uh, just keeping the community safe. And so, if they were protesting masks and all that kind of stuff, which looked like what they were doing, um, you know, ultimately, it's it's just antithetical to what actually is an effective school environment right now, which is yeah. people all looking out for each other's health um, and creating a self safe environment. So I just want to highlight that the opposite of this um, is is what other people are doing to promote public health in schools, which is is important. I'm uh, you know follow me on Twitter. I'm always there. Uh, I'm working on a new book after Dying of Whiteness, my last one. So much more to come. But it's just always great to have these conversations. So so important.
Brother, always great to have you. You always do a great job. And let me just say this for the record, that is not the new school board. Take care of yourself, take care of each other, take care of the planet. Remember the truth is always indisputable.